Hello, everyone. So, um, I'm going to talk about this uh, really nice and cool topic uh, from physical world to online business or online shopping, uh, or actually how we can make computers to do our job. So, how we build our web shops, how we should build our web shops, what is the future, and uh, what's the fight between human and the computer? This will be, this will be our topics. So. We have this mindset. We have a physical shop and we decide, okay, let's go online. Let's, let's sell our stuff online because yeah, everything is online and we also want to be cool. So we tag our shop and we just make the online shop. We have a menu, we have a product and we think, fine, that's all. We start selling, we make a lot of money. Yes, maybe, and uh, maybe not. What we should actually do, we should have a lot of shops. We should have a lot of different online shops, a lot of different business. Because we cannot do this with a physical store, with a brick shop, but we can do this online. We can have different designs, we can have different products, we can serve different things to different people. Because if I do some online shopping. I want to know uh, what is the best for me, and I want to buy that. And the shop needs to know what's the best for the person who is actually buying. But how do we do all this? Maybe you're asking, is it even possible? Yes, it is possible. We can do that, and we can do that really easily. Um, but first, what we need to do is we need to understand the importance of online business or online shopping. So the online shopping in the future, or even now, is the primary income of the company, or should be primary income on the, of the company. And uh, of course, it's a great company presentation. It's very easy to, to make your brand look much better if you have cool and great online shop. Um, yeah, there is a thing, since online is online, we actually can serve unlimited amount of people. We can serve whole world with one or two or three or potentially hundreds of shops. And it will cost us less than to have hundreds of physical shops, obviously. So again, how do we do this? There are many ways, but there is this thing called collaborative filtering. Also, this has many different forms, but those can be um, described with uh, two basic different options. So, user-based algorithm, item-based algorithm, and uh, as you can see, those are neighbor-based algorithms. So user-based algorithm is trying to calculate the rating or to try to find the pattern uh, of different users. So if user A likes item Z and user B likes item Y, there is no pattern. But if they like the same item, then most likely they will also like the same different item. So if user A likes item Z and user B likes item Z, then probably they will also like item Y together because there is a pattern. They have same need. So this is user-based algorithm. Then there is also item-based algorithm. Item-based algorithm is trying to build a matrix and trying to find the correlation between items in this matrix. So between different items, not users. Um, these calculations, they can be based on the memory data, so memory-based, something what we already have in the database, and a new one, the model-based, or new one, different one, model-based, which is actually real-time. Yes, combination, obviously, hybrid. So we can use our data from database, from the memory, and the actual data from the store, from the people, what they are doing in the online store. So. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah. 
This is memory based approach and this is how computers are calculating something was that. So here we can see the calculation of the rating for user and for the item. So rating R, user U, item I. And uh, we have a group of users. In this case, it's shown as a capital U. And for each of the user in this group, so U with an apostrophe, we need to calculate the rating. So rating for user U with an apostrophe and the item. In the other words, what we are trying to do is we try to find what is the similar needs of different users. So then we will know, OK, the user A likes this, and user B likes the same, and user C likes the same. So they have same need, most likely. So let's offer them something what is good for them. Let's do small exercise, and uh, we will maybe understand it a bit better. There is a question. So um, this blue person, this blue guy, he or she, he, doesn't know what to buy. But we already know that uh, we have different users, and uh, we know what they were buying, what they were not buying, so what they like or what they not like. So just two different ratings, yes and no. In this case, full lines, they are showing what people bought or what people like, and dotted lines, they show what people don't like or what they didn't buy. So do we already know what this blue person wants to buy or what we want to offer to this person, what he should buy? I think it's pretty difficult to know at this point. So we can simplify it a bit. So we remove something what people don't like because this is not important for us at this point. We don't need to know what people don't like, but we need to know what people like or buy when we want to offer something for the person to buy. Got a bit simpler, but do we already know? I don't know. I have no idea what this blue person should buy now. So uh, let's simplify it a bit again. And uh, we remove the really irrelevant data. So we removed two users. They didn't have any similar or the same pattern with the blue person. Because we see the blue person likes or bought apple and the orange, and uh, this brown one and, uh, and the yellow one, they didn't have the same need. But the green one and the red one, they have. So green one bought apple and the watermelon, and the uh, red one bought apple, orange, and the watermelon. So what we can see here is that there is a pattern between these users, because also blue one is buying apple and uh, buying orange. So it's more or less the same as green one and, and as the red one. I would say we should offer the watermelon to this one, because they have same need. They have same purchases in the database. So this is a pattern, and we found the answer for, for our question. And as you can see, it was actually the same what computer is doing behind. This is the model-based approach when we have, uh, sorry, memory-based approach when we have the data in our database. So we go through whole entire database, we analyze all the data there, and using this formula, we can actually predict that the blue person should buy the watermelon. Um, yes, memory-based, it means we need to go through whole database, and we need to analyze a lot of data, and if we have a big online shop with millions of items or even thousands of items, but we have a lot of users, it means a lot of calculations has to be done. So I would say the model-based approach is something what we should probably rather use. So it's based on the actual data, on the real-time data. There are advantages, and there are disadvantages. 
So nothing is perfect, obviously. But in this case, computer can learn by itself using the training data and then decide, OK, so I learned this exactly as a human. So let's do that exactly as a human. It can use data mining. It can use uh, machine learning and uh, different algorithms. These ones are only really basic ones. There are a lot of them, really a lot. And it depends what we want to do, which one we want to choose, actually. So um, we, we want to make our website so that they sell for, our, for ourselves. They are the salesperson for us. Because people are more valuable than computers. So obviously, we don't want people to do all the job, all this manual um, stuff, programming, setting, and uh, everything. We can make computer to do that. So we can make computers to find patterns easily, making predictions, and just do the sales. And we can use then people to do really valuable job, something what computers cannot do. So what I would say, this is the future. We should make our computers to do our job, to save money, and to, of course, then make more money at the end. Thank you very much.